Here's the RD210. Is this an X-Frame? No, it looks more like an H-Frame to me. Here's the GE240. Is this an X-Frame? Hmm, looks like an X. I would say, yes, this is indeed an X-Frame. Is this an X-Frame? I don't, I don't know. I, I, do you call this an X-Frame when it has this around the outside? Maybe it's a square frame. <laughs> Today we're taking a look at another quadcopter. This one's called the Multi-Rotor 230. You think these guys can come up with a little bit more unique names than Multi-Rotor. Well, this one's a little bit more unique than the other ones I've looked at because it has skinnier arms here, but then it has the linking arms around the outside with a little bit extra back here in the back to mount your mounting gear. So it comes in a package like this. Let me get this thing open. We'll take a little closer look at it. Besides the main plate here, it also comes with a lot of little smaller pieces. And this one's a little bit more unique than something like the Krieger where the side plates are being held down with a, uh, with a nut and a screw. These actually wrap on the sides of this frame, so it'll be kind of interesting to see how this goes together. So here's what it looks like fully assembled. And like I was saying before, the kind of cool thing about this is that these side plates mount around the main plate. So you can see right here is the main plate. And then right here, this kind of comes down around it, and you have these uh, spacers on the bottom. And this is <laughs> it's kind of neat, unique because I haven't seen any other quadcopters do this. And so here's the uh, piece back here to help the top be a little bit stronger. And then it has this one up here, and it has this uh, these two pieces of carbon fiber. There's two of them here. They're just stuck together. And then your camera mount mounts onto here and hangs down. Now the only thing that's kind of bad about this is you can kind of see here it's flopping around because the spacers are either too long or the carbon fiber inside wasn't cut wide enough. So before you actually use this frame, you'd have to do something about that. Either glue these in place or cut down your spacers or something because they, this should be very tight around here, but for some reason they thought that wasn't important. Another thing that's kind of odd, it has this little piece back here. It looks like this. And I'm not really sure what this is supposed to do, but it fits perfectly on there and I don't see it in the pictures, but maybe that's where it's supposed to go, I guess. Another thing that's odd about this is it's supposed to have come with a camera mount. Here's the uh, web page, and it says comes with the multi rotor and the camera mount. However, I didn't get a camera mount, so <laughs> that's what it looks like. I might order that separately or call, uh, open a ticket with them and tell them it's missing. Anyway, let me get some measurements on this thing. So here's the uh, ruler up here on the motor mounts, and if I take this motor mount to motor mount, you can see it's nearly spot on at, at the 230. So they did a good job measuring this. Um, it's supposed to be a three millimeter plate. That's kind of what it feels like here. Let me see if I can get the caliper on this, 2.92. And these uh, side plates here are coming in about three millimeter also. So. Not too bad. And I think this is just two pieces of three millimeter. Yeah, it's just two pieces of three millimeter carbon fiber up on top. Since I'll probably get asked in the comments anyway about this, I'll go ahead and tell you. This here, this, this from front to back is about, what's that, 164 millimeters. And from side to side, it's about the same thing, 164 millimeters more or less. So this is actually, uh, it's a, it really is a square, or at least the motors are in a square shape. You can also see here that this is going to take 18, or uh, not take your 1806 motors, but rather it's going to use the uh, 2200 series motors. So if you have 1806 motors or 1306, they're not going to fit in these uh, pre-cut holes. You, you'd have to re-drill them yourself. But don't do that. Just use the 2200 size motors like it was designed for. Especially if you're going to run uh, six inch props. The 2200 will run will spin six inch props like Mad Men. It's awesome. So here's the frame with no camera mount, but it does have this extra piece of carbon fiber back there for who knows what reason. If I put it on the scale, it comes in about 131.9 grams. So here's the frame and here's some six inch propellers. I'm going to put these on here. You can see they clear the body just fine. So this can actually run six inch propellers on it which would be huge and uh, just to make sure here yeah they're not they're not going uh, over the center this way either so you could run six inch propellers on this and this thing was gonna have a lot of thrust to it now the one thing I like about this frame is that you know for this style anyway is that it has this extra plate back here in the back where you gives you some extra place to mount your video transmitter or your receiver so you don't have to stack it all up inside. It does have the four mounting holes inside here for your flight board, but you can't use the same mounting holes on the bottom because they're covered up by the aluminum spacers. Now, 
another thing about this, this does seem kind of odd that they would have the, you know, this kind of shape like this. But there's a few other people that have made frames similar to this. And the nice thing about these uh, arms here is that they can be, they can stay skinny. And by being a little bit thinner, the, the air can get past it a lot uh, better than something like this RD210, where these arms are a little bit thicker. All everything underneath the propellers or all the carbon fiber underneath the propellers, all it's doing is slowing the wind down, getting past there, so it can, it can lower your thrust off of your quadcopters. Having multiple ones that are, have, are smaller arms like this, I think, but at least it makes sense that these would be a little bit more, uh, or a little bit less intrusive to the wind pushing past them. One other thing kind of worth pointing out is it looks like it has like, the carbon fiber has like little creases in it right there. There's also some little creases right here and hopefully you can see those. Just like, like they're like little creases. They're not cracks because so they don't go through anything. And then there's a, there's one inside here on the, um, on the main part there. What if this look cracked? They're not cracks, they're just little creases or something. It's kind of, <laughs> I don't know what to make of those. Another thing that's kind of odd is up here on the top, it has like these white parts on here. I'm not sure what that is, if it's like glue or something, but it's not, it's, it's actually built into the carbon fiber because it's perfectly smooth across here. It's just kind of odd, I guess. Anyway, yeah, also, one more thing I was going to mention. It has this upper plate up here that you can mount stuff up on top, but you may not want to do that just in case you start rolling and that would be bad and then also down here on the bottom it has these extra little slits that are cut in right here and this is so you can run your battery strap through there and strap your battery onto the bottom of this quadcopter and uh you know keep it out of the way keep it from falling off anyway this is the multi-rotor 230 from banggood if you have any questions about this one leave them in the comments and i will try to help you out as best i can and as always thanks for watching this is a weird looking quadcopter